How long did it take you to do this? It, uh, <laughs> we installed this, uh, well actually Judy Tyrus was the co-curator who did all the research in New York, gathered up all the photographs um, that are represented in the exhibit. And um, it, we worked on designing this exhibit for about um, two months prior to the arrival here. And um, and just had we had a terrific time with it. I myself loved putting it together, and and I, for Mr. Mitchell to be able to see it. When did Martin Luther King shot? 1968. So I'm talking about 20 years before that. This black man was in an all-white company. So he's in this major company. He's their premier dancer. He's breaking a major barrier. He even said, "Don't even announce it to the press." that I'm, I'm going to be part of this company. Let them find out when they come see the show. So when he came on stage and the hecklers started yelling and saying, you know, that's an end and all that, he had, there were other people saying, give him a chance. And by the end of that first night, he had a standing ovation. And he broke that barrier. To start with, the exhibit, I'm Woody Schofield, by the way. I, I'm, I'm the Deputy Director of Operations and Special Programs here at the California African American Museum. and. To start with, as far as the Dance Theater of Harlem 40 Years of First exhibit, it, it was presented at the Library for the Performing Arts, New York Public Library for the Performing Arts and Lincoln Center back in uh, the spring of 09. And it wasn't made to tour. So what we did, uh, we invested some money uh, and helped create the exhibit to bring it to the West Coast so we could premiere it here at CAM. And there were several things that we needed to add to the exhibit to make it uh, work for a museum. The first thing was a banner for the exhibit itself. It didn't have a banner. We, so we came up with this as the banner for the exhibit. We added, we wanted a dance image out here too. So we scanned uh, some of my tour posters. So I used to work with Dance Theater of Harlem for about a 10 year period, I was director of touring. And we took uh, several of our, my tour posters and took images off those posters. The image here is from the ballet called Dowina, choreographed by Royston Muldoon. And uh, that was in repertory for many years with Dance Theater of Harlem. And it fit perfectly, this image with the dancers fit perfectly on our marquee. What, what letter do you see? You see B. B is for victory. He was always instil instilling greatness in his students. This is Corral Shook, who co-founded the Dance Theater of Harlem with him. He called him up in Europe. Corral was doing big things in ballet, he was a big time in the ballet world. And Arthur called him up and said, I want to start this school. I'm concerned about these angry children. Corral got on the first plane, and he helped him start the dance school. The district director of the Dance Theater of Harlem, she came and visited us in May. You know, Mr. Mitchell, they didn't, which, which is a distinction between Alvin Ailey, that a lot of people know, and Dance Theater of Harlem. Dance Theater of Harlem's women danced on point. They're a ballet company. They're not a modern company. Um, so that, that is what distinguished them from many of the other companies. Um, now, they did dance different forms of um, uh, dance. And for instance, uh, this work by Jeffrey Holder, Dougla, uh, was set on the company in 1974, uh, premiered in 75, and um, it was based on his background. Uh, Jeffrey grew up in Trinidad. Dougla, um, the term Dougla means, uh, refers to people who are first generation um, Indo-Hindu and African descent. So that's where the name Dougla came from. So Jeffrey choreographed, reenacted a, a marriage between Dougla people and these costumes are from that work. And this is the um, bride and the groom in the center. Uh, the green, the, what's called the green lady out front here. And uh, she's kind of a shaman figure. And one of the core girls is next, and then uh, we call them the, the black girls in the back. 
uh, were sort of mystical. Uh, cost, uh, the way that the costumes, the way they moved in the costumes, they sort of floated across the stage. Um, but this work, choreographed by Jeffrey Holder, was uh, never went out of repertory. It was the longest running ballet in Dance Theater of Harlem's history. Uh, it was, like I said, it was staged in 74, continued for the next 30 years with the company. They performed it every year. So Dance Theater of Harlem, they are a ballet-based company, but they did perform other disciplines of dance. And some of the video in, uh, that you see in this exhibit, like for instance this one, uh, was done for uh, Dance in America series. And that the Firebird uh, excerpts that we edited for the exhibit uh, were from the premiere at the Kennedy Center Opera House. And it was the making of Firebird. That was that was what it was made for. You know, Creole Giselle. Uh, this this is another stamp. This is another example of uh, Arthur Mitchell taking a work that that's set in Europe and then placing it in Louisiana, and they renamed it Creole Giselle. Um, it still followed the uh, this storyline of uh, a gentleman, aristocrat, aristocratic gentleman, meeting a woman, her falling in love with him, um, finding out that he's promised to someone else, breaks her heart, um, she dies of a broken heart, and then they have these char these characters in the ballet called Willies, who are all women who who have. Um, have been uh, treated badly by men, so they take out, they, they actually <laughs> come back as spirits and, and uh, do bad things to men who are living on the earth. <laughs> so, so men beware, you don't want to, you don't want to be, be, you don't want to be chased by a willy. So you can see just by what the four ballets that were represented here in the, in the exhibit, the diversity of Dance Theater of Harlem. Um, and they were primarily African American, but they had uh, dancers of other ethnic backgrounds, uh, but they were primarily African American ballet company. So Mr. Mitchell, as you may have heard, uh, was inspired to begin a school in Harlem after the assassination of Dr. King, and decided to go to Harlem invest his own money in uh, building a dance studio with the proper floor and ballet bars. Uh, he had to move from Harlem School in the Arts to the basement of Church of the Masters because he had uh, several hundred kids in the school. Um, and he taught there until uh, he was able to acquire his new his building that uh, where the company the company's home has been since the uh, 70s over that? on uh, 152nd Street between St. Nicholas and Amsterdam, 466 West 152nd Street. The one thing that we did want was to, when people go around and see everything, to end with uh, an image of Mr. Mitchell and the kids because it's all about young people and uh, inspiring young people. So that's why we took this photograph from the exhibit, scanned it, blew it up, and then placed it here. And above that is the um, professional company from the 2001 season. And some of the couple of the people that are in the school photograph are in that company photograph above it. This is a picture of him from 1995. I saw him last week. He does not look much different than this. This man does not age.